thanks for watching. Today I'm going to be talking about my Turnagine 9X transmitter. Um, it's a rainy day in Perth, I'm stuck inside and I've decided it's time to A, play with my new camera and B, time to go ahead and finish off the installation of my FR Sky XJT module. Now for the last uh, better part of two years I've been flying uh, with the Turnigy 9X because uh, I went away from a DX6i Spectrum. Already had the uh, Open 9X mod done to the software, gone ahead and installed the LCD screen, has been a fantastic transmitter, it's been excellent. Now I'm flying with an internal uh, spectrum receiver. So what I'm going to show you today is how I went and installed the internal spectrum receiver because it's a little bit different to what some other people are doing. Uh, and what I'm going to try and achieve today by adding both so I can have the XJT and the spectrum on the same time. The other thing I'm going to be doing is also removing the antenna to make this as small as possible um, and changing the battery setup because I want it to be a little bit more portable so I can take it around places when I've taken my tricopter around. Here we go. Alright, so we've gone ahead and removed the, the front cover. So we're now looking at the inside of the back cover of our Turnigy 9X. So let's look at how I've been running the system for the last couple of years. So what I did is took the module from uh, an original Spectrum DX4E and modified it to run within side of this so I didn't have to run an external module something I already had didn't want to go and spend any more money so let's look and see how I went about doing that all right so the first problem you're going to come against when wiring up the module is the power is too high so the very first thing we're going to need, need to do is add a UBEC to the system so we can drop it down to 3.3 volts. Now, it's reasonably easy. You can pick up uh, a ground from here, uh, which is the back of your battery connector. You've also got positive 12 volts or whatever battery you're running from here. Seventh connector here or third connector down. All great sources of 12 volts. That's going to power your UBEC. The power then runs up to the first pin for the ground, second pin for the positive 12, of uh, positive 3.3. The next pin you're going to need to connect is your signal pin. Now that's where we run into a little bit of drama. The signal voltage coming out of the 9X was a little too high for the Spectrum module to accept. So the way around that is by adding a small voltage divider circuit. Um, on the top pin we have a 1k ohm resistor, on the bottom pin down we have a 2k ohm resistor, they're soldered together and then the blue wire is then attached and then runs all the way up to there. It's been working fine like that for years, it's been absolutely flawless, it's been fantastic. One final thing that needs to be done for the modification is to attach the antenna. Now if you look here you've got a place to clip an antenna to. Now this didn't have that clip so this needed to be added um, very very carefully. So what this is is the outside of the earth just here attached to the outside of the connector. Now the inside here was almost impossible to solder to so what we did was scraped a little bit of the PCB down here so you could actually get to the track itself on the board and the very central wire for the antenna is directly soldered directly to the board and that'll get you using the factory antenna that's included with the, the 9X. Alright so let's talk about how we're going to safely add our J XJT module to the back of the already modified transmitter. Now the biggest thing we need to do is make sure that we're not powering both the Spectrum module and the XJT transmitter at the same time. So the way I've gone about this is I've added an extra switch to the unit. You can see up top. And this is so I can turn one module on and the other one off at the same time. So the way I've gone about that is we've already got our power running to the BEC to power that. So what I've had to do is, this is where the XJT module gets the power from. 
So what we need to do is to make sure that we can disconnect the power to this. The only way to do that is cut the trace on the board. So what I've gone ahead and done is cut the trace on the board, verify that there's no physical connection there with a the multimeter. I've taken the 12 volts from the seventh pin in, down the bottom, run that up to the center tap on a switch. Now, depending on what position the switch is in, I'm either gonna redirect the power back to the XJT module, or I'm going to redirect the power to the BEC, which is then going to turn on the spectrum module. So just um, a quick little thing, uh, I've made sure that the switch is down, which turns on the back module, and the switch is up, which turns on that. So that just tells me which antenna the switch is pointing at uh, is what's gonna be used. One thing you might notice that I've done in between the, the last videos is I have desoldered the little antenna that used to live on here, and I've now gone ahead and made my own little mount. Uh, I've actually cut the end of the transmitter off as well. I wanted to make this as short as physically possible so there's less likelihood of it getting damaged from traveling or throwing in my backpack. Uh, I've gone ahead and designed and 3, 3D printed a little grommet which slides into the end and also has a little hex on the back so it, it, it kind of ties it all together and then I've just two-part epoxied it into the end of it so now the benefit I've got is I can now use multiple different antennas so uh, if I'm flying nice close range I can use a little two and a half um, dB whip or what I'm using for my long range setup on the XJT is a 5 dB so that is now extending the range of my spectrum gear as well if I still find that um, I'm still running at a range out of either, out of either either gear I can now go to a patch style antenna so it just gives me lots lots of flexibility and there's no chance of the antennas and things getting damaged now when they're in transit uh, what's next okay so another quick mod that I've done to um, the transmitter as well I've got rid of the old battery packs the old battery packs are really really heavy um, just got rid of that um, what I've decided to do is just replace it with a micro Deans connector and a little 850 milliamp battery. This is probably gonna get me around about an hour and a half flight time. So it's not good for a whole day, but it is super, super lightweight. Um, and most of my flight packs use um, micro Deans. So if I do get stuck, I can actually just steal one of my flight packs and throw it in the back. So I do have some other larger 1300 batteries that I also put in here for a, a longer flight, just in case. Now, one thing I have done to the transmitter is put a little cheat sheet on the back of the transmitter. Um, I have three different modules, uh, three different receivers for my different craft. I have a L9R, an X4R and a D4R2. Um, so it's really, really important with the XJT module that you have the dip switches in the correct positions, otherwise it won't talk to the correct receivers. So that's about it for the modifications on this. Um, it's about to go back together and we'll make sure it works. All right, there we have it. It's all back together, it's all working. I've just fired my tricop drop inside, which is running on Spectrum, and made sure that's okay. Fired up my mini quad inside, and that's running on FR Sky, and that's working perfect as well. So, a um, couple little notes uh, about the whole thing. We've managed to save a few hundred grams by changing over to a small battery, um, as opposed to the old battery pack, which is a lovely bonus. We've managed to save a, a few inches here and uh, a lot less chance of getting damaged. We've had the functionality of now having both transmitters at our disposal, so we've got access to all the lovely binder fly stuff from, from Spectrum, or the really cheap Spectrum modules, those sorts of things. And we've also got the access to the RSSI and the lovely functions that the XJT and the long range stuff that uh, they give us, so fantastic. Um, one last word of warning, when you are flicking your transmitter on, make sure that you have this switch in the right position and the antenna on the module that you actually plan on running. Now with the FR Sky, I'm just going to turn the FR Sky on, it's going to give you a warning to tell you there's no antenna in the way, so you're not going to burn the transmitter out because it's going to beep at you and let you know what's going on. The spectrum module isn't so smart, so you do have the possibility of burning the spectrum module out if you don't have an antenna on there and you do leave the switch on. 
So whether you go ahead and put a little LED on there to tell you the, the, that module's on, however you want to do it, I feel pretty comfortable with leaving it this way. Um, absolutely stoked. One last thing, don't forget to go through and make sure you change your protocol depending on which module you're using. Uh, PPM for the FR Sky and DSM-2 for the Spectrum gear. Alright, thanks for watching the videos. I managed to turn a horrible rainy day in Perth into something that was a whole heap of fun. Thanks again. Ciao.